If you've watched some of my other videos, you may have noticed that my Discovery has no sill protection whatsoever. I removed the OEM plastic sill covers a year ago and intended to build some rock sliders to replace them. As is often the case, other projects took priority and the disco sills were left vulnerable for way too long. Today I'm going to fix that. When I realized that the bottom of the doors on the Discovery had a pretty dramatic curve, I gave up on building my own from scratch. I just don't have the tooling to accurately roll a big square tube like that. Instead, I picked up the most basic terra firma sliders I could find. These don't have any tree bars or nerf bars or whatever you want to call them, but they do have the necessary curvature to look right under the doors. Every set of Land Rover sliders I've seen mounts directly to the body, not the frame. So after a quick wash to avoid trapping mud and debris between the body and the new sliders, I'm ready to test fit them. Here you can see how these are attached to the body. The sill is a box section of steel and the slider has a channel that effectively sandwiches the sill between it. These sliders are actually for a discovery too, so I know there will be slight modification required. Since I've trimmed my fenders for tire clearance, the discovery one sliders would be too long and I couldn't find any D1 options without tree bars anyway. So far, it looks like I'll need to make room for a body seam behind the front door and a bolt head that's in a slightly different position between the D1 and D2. I'll also take about an inch off the front of the slider in case I ever want to run bigger tires. With all the interfering steel removed, the slider now fits pretty well. The shorter length in the front will help if I ever try to put 35s on this thing, and it matches the distance from the rear door to the rear of the slider. As an added bonus, the bolt holes line up pretty well, so I'll drill out a few to get this thing loosely mounted. The 3 8 bolts go right through the sill and these spacers so you don't crush the sill when you tighten it down.
At this point, I could weld this up, paint it, and call it done. But one of my favorite sayings is, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So here we go. I've had 24 feet of inch and three quarter, 125 wall DOM tubing sitting in my garage for nearly a year, and a tubing bender that I used once for this practice bend. So my plan is to teach myself how to bend and cope tubing and weld some tree bars to the existing sliders. I've never done this before, so I've mentally prepared to ruin a lot of really nice tube. I'm pretty sure this bender is not rated for the material I'm bending, which is probably why I bent three of these bolts over the course of four bends. I already have a 90 degree bend in one end of this tube, so I'm using that to zero out the tube in the bender. The idea here is to have two 90 degree bends in the same plane. Like I said, I have no real experience with tubing benders. I bought this affordable bender used, and I'm finding that you get what you pay for in this case. My biggest gripe with it is that it doesn't seem to be able to bend a full 90 degrees in one go. I have to bend the first 50 or so, then raise the extension screw on the jack to finish the bend. Pretty annoying. After considerable fuckery, however, I now have a piece of tube that should work for the outer part of my slider. It's not perfect, but definitely good enough. And believe it or not, I was able to make a matching one for the other side. It's the next day and I've gotten the tube to fit the somewhat irregular profile of the slider. Some cuts on the bandsaw and some careful belt sanding was all it took. At an eighth of an inch thick, this tube should be quite strong, but it still needs some support. For that, I'll use another cheap tool for the first time, the Harbor Freight Tubing Notcher. For as cheap as it is, this thing works great. Since I'm TIG welding these sliders, I'm shooting for a pretty tight fit up. It didn't take much fine tuning at all to end up with this. And again, I surprised myself by making a second one. By far the worst part about modifying aftermarket sliders is removing the powder coat where I needed to weld. Powder coat is a great finish for a lot of things, but since rock sliders are essentially a wear item, a coating that's easier to touch up and rework is probably a better option.
So now I've got two sliders completely welded, but I forgot something. There's a hole for a high lift jack, and that's right where I put the tree bars. If left open, mud and rocks could get inside the tube and rust it out pretty quickly. So as much as I don't want to weld anymore, I'm going to make some quick covers for these holes. I wouldn't say I'm proud of these welds. I didn't grind off enough of the mill scale from the patches I made, and I think some powder coat contaminated them as well. Still, they're done and ready for a final test fit before paint. It's October in Western Oregon, so I had to wait a few days for a decent day to paint. Eventually we got a good one, and I'm interested to try some of this paint that's been recommended for projects like this. It's called Steel It, and supposedly it's weldable, easy to rework, and pretty durable. It seems to lay down pretty well, and if I had been able to strip all the powder coat before painting, I think these would have turned out perfect. So here's the final installation. I used thick fender washers on the inside of the sill channel, and they seem pretty solid. I had big plans to do an off-roading trip once I finished these, but the rear differential just blew up in a parking lot, so I guess we'll have to settle for these boring driveway shots of the finished product. Would I do this again? Absolutely not. It was a good way to learn some new skills, but it would have been a lot less work and maybe a little cheaper to just make sliders from scratch. Lesson learned, I guess. <laughs>